this month of punk rock history, let's go to the movies. The month of March saw the release of The Great Rock and Roll School in 1980. That's the story of the Sex Pistols, as only Malcolm McLaren could tell. Good night and fuck off to you! A TV movie called Made in Britain came out in 1982. Starting Tim Roth as a Nazi skinhead. I don't like the everyday all American girl. Another State of Mind came out in 1984. That's the Social Distortion Youth Brigade Road movie. The Other F Word came out in 2011. That's a documentary about punk rock fatherhood. The Punk Singer came out in 2013. A documentary about Bikini Kill founder Kathleen Hanna. And Bomb City came out in 2017. A dramatization about the life and death of a young Texas punk. Now, none of these were the first, and none of these were the worst. Okay, maybe Swiggle was the worst, but anyway, let's talk about punk rock movies. Some people think it's a riot. Some think it may start one. Between concert films, cultural analyses, and fiction, the list of punk rock movies is enormous. In fact, in preparation for the story, I compiled a list of more than 160 films about punk, with punks, or with punk soundtracks. While gatekeeping debates about what specifically is and is not punk will never cease, the relationship between the music and the movies is undeniable. Movies are as much a part of the scene as music, zines, fashion, visual arts, and DIY ethics. In an interview for AFI, Steven Spielberg called A Clockwork Orange the first punk rock movie. Released in 1971, the Malcolm McDowell career maker certainly was influential in the early 80s oi scene in terms of aesthetics as well as lyrical content. Similarly, the Ramones and the Misfits were influenced by countless B-movies and schlocky horror films such as Todd Browning's Freaks, Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Ted V. Nichols Astro Zombies, and George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. But probably the first ever true punk rock film was The Blank Generation, which came out in 1976 and was directed by Yvonne Krall and Amos Poe and filmed in green, black, and white Super 8. The No Wave Art House movie features New York City's developing Lower East Side scene and includes performances by Patti Smith, Television, The Ramones, Blondie, and Tough Darts, among several others, uh, all at various venues such as CBGB's in Max's Kansas City. Now, this is not to be confused with Blank Generation, the 1980 drama starring Richard Hell as an up-and-coming punk rock star. The entire soundtrack was written by Hell and performed by his band The Voidoids. Across the pond, one of the earliest UK punk movies was Jubilee. The 1978 Derek Jarman art film, scored by Brian Eno, and starred Adam Ant, Jordan, and Jane County, among others. The Slits and Susie and the Banshees also make appearances. More along the lines of the like generation is Don Wett's punk rock movie, which came out in 1978. Another compilation of concert footage shot on Super 8, this time featuring unflinching backstage footage of bands like Eater, Generation X, and The Clash goofing around, shooting up, and rehearsing before taking the stage. And let's not forget about the Ramones' Hollywood debut in Rock and Roll High School, which came out in 1979. Directed by Alan Arkush and starring Clint Howard and PJ Souls, the Ramones were the third choice band to lead this film behind Cheap Trick and Todd Rundgren. Next is 1980's The Great Rock and Roll Swindle, a farcical mixed media biopic of the Sex Pistols. McLaren reportedly funneled most of the band's earnings into this, his magnum opus. The band had been dissolved for about two years by the time of its completion, and McLaren was court ordered to release the film and its soundtrack to pay off his debt to the band. Back in the U.S., Penelope Spears, 1981, The Decline of Western Civilization, documented the L.A. punk scene by talking with bands as well as fans. Inspired by her own work, Spears went on to release Suburbia in 1983, a drama centered on a group of punk runaways squatting in an empty suburban L.A. house. Punk Rock! Punk Rock explores the seamy underside of the New York rock scene. Well, this is not meant to be a best of list, Honorable mention is split between Carter Stevens' 1977 crime drama slash porno, Punk Rock, which stars Debbie Harry's former stiletto bandmate, Elda Gentile, and the 1987 ABC after school special, The Day My Kid Went Punk, starring the boy who could fly, Jay Underwood. Finally, no punk rock movie list would be complete without mention of Sid and Nancy from 1986, a polarizing movie to be sure, acclaimed by punk outsiders and panned by those in the know. John Lydon suggested the film's director be brought up on charges of manslaughter for glamorizing the junkie lifestyle. What's your favorite punk rock movie? Let me know in the comments. Get ready, steady, go. Maybe next month we'll talk about Generation X. The
the man, not the actual generation. Meanwhile, don't forget to check out today in punk rock history via tiprh.start.page. For this month in punk rock history, I'm Brendan McCabe. Thank you.